Aviation history landed in Tallahassee on a bright, crisp February day. It dropped into our airport to remind us of a struggle that consumed the world more than 75 years ago. It's a wonderful thing that the Foundation does and makes these airplanes available for people to enjoy and to learn. That is Stuart Goldstein, and the foundation of which he speaks is the Liberty Foundation, a historical group committed to preserving World War II era aviation. Stuart and fellow pilot Ray Fowler flew into the capital city with a B-17 bomber and a P-51 Mustang fighter as part of a Gulf Coast tour of the historic aircraft. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have the P-51 and the EO Pub B-17. We still take all over the country and give people the ultimate history lesson to go take a flight in the aircraft. These types of planes saw action primarily in the second half of World War II in the European theater, where they were instrumental in the Allied bombing campaign against Nazi Germany. This gives people an opportunity to see this and maybe inquire further and to see and to try to learn about World War II, about these airplanes, about the, about the uh, airmen that flew in them and the sacrifices they made. It's a lesson worth paying attention to. Uh, so this is the P-51, obviously North American P-51 Mustang. Uh, this is a red tail, which is painted after the 100th Fighter Squadron, which was the Tuskegee Airmen, where they would have anywhere from 75-gallon uh, drop tanks up to 120-gallon drop tanks. So, Again, that's what gave them the very long range between the drop tanks, the fuselage tank. I mean, they would go well over a thousand miles deep into, uh, into enemy territory with the bombers, and that's really what their, uh, their, uh, their goal was, to protect the bombers all the way to the target and back. All right, so this airplane in war had a crew of 10, two pilots, a uh, flight engineer, I probably missed one or two, there was a radio operator, there were gunners, um, in various places, there's a navigator, bombardier, the navigator and bombardier set up in that plexiglass uh, area in the front. There's a tail gunner, the two side gunners, uh, and radio operators, and like I said, a crew of 10. Um, there were 12,731 B-17s built, and um, it wasn't the friendly skies. There were more uh, Eighth Air Force airmen killed in World War II than all the Marines that died in World War II. So, I mean, that's kind of a staggering statistic when you think about it. Ten crew members, one went down, ten people. And they had, there were many raids with hundreds of airplanes and many airplanes lost, so you can just imagine. They would fly at altitudes in the high 20,000s. The crew members had heated suits, which they could plug in and get some heat, but there are stories that, you know, they would perspire and everything, and then there was just, the electrics would short out, so, and it was, you know, 30 degrees below zero up there at that altitude, so you can imagine what they went through, and they would fly day after day after day. My father flew in that war. He was in a different type of bomber, a B-24. He was shot down over the Adriatic Sea, but he survived, so I'm here today. He never liked to talk about his war experience, and today there are so few of his generation left. But 75 years later, there are a few of these warbirds still able to take to the skies, and I was lucky to take a short ride. It's incredibly cramped for what appears to be a fairly large plane. It's loud. In the area near the radio operator, where I was able to stand up straight, I found my head was partially outside of the plane. My cameraman was able to crawl around to many of the manned positions in the plane. The waste guns. The bomb bay. The flight deck. And the nose cone where the bombardier was positioned. I can't imagine flying for hours in one of these, only to find a determined enemy trying to kill you. The fuselage is thin sheet metal offering little, if any, protection against bullets and anti-aircraft flak. Half his tail shot off, but still going ahead. And still they come. It had to be a harrowing experience to fly one of these into battle, and then do it again and again. It sure gives one something to think about. Uh, you know, you think about the responsibility that these guys had on any given day and the odds that they faced every day and to go out and lose friends and to come back and to do it again all for your country is just 
unbelievable. So that's that's why it's a passion of ours for the Liberty Foundation to keep these airplanes flying and keep them out of museums. For WFSU Public Media, I'm Mike Plummer.